Here are the items that I keep in my illness pack. Uh, I have this for when myself or one of my family members become ill. I don't use all of it, but I have it readily available. A lot of times, and you're seeing this again with the toilet paper and the paper towels and the sanitary wipes and such, that there's a mad rush. Why? Because people haven't prepared and haven't stocked up on these items. I'm not saying you need 55 gallons of hand sanitizer, but I am saying you should have some on hand. These are the items I think are the important to have uh, for an extended illness, a two-week illness. And I'm going to go over them, and I kind of grouped them into different areas. First, personal protection, medicine, and uh, foods. Personal protection. You should have masks. Yes. These are the N95 masks that we spoke about that filter out 95% of particulates. These are just simple, um, cheap masks. Again, good if you're sick and you're coughing and sneezing and you want to protect yourself from expelling uh, the particulates uh, into the environment, people you live with and so forth. Good to have these for that. Again, if you have to go treat someone, this is the mask you'd want to use. Need gloves. Gloves are very important. You do not want to touch uh, people's excretions. Dirty tissue, other types of waste, wear gloves. I have a, pa uh, a package of kitchen bags. Why? I think it's a good idea that once you have your day or so done of cleaning up for someone who's ill, you put it in a bag, you tie it up, and you get rid of it. It's better than having it sitting in your regular kitchen trash for a day, two, three, four days. So I have a bag here, a box of bags here. They make them even smaller. Um, some of the large retailers sell even smaller bags, which would be good too. Um, but I have that here. you got to have a thermometer. One of the signs or symptoms is fever. So you'll need a thermometer. You can use uh, one of these electronic ones. They have the gun type uh, thermometers. You certainly could use the old school mercury. There's none that's more effective than another. If you gotta go and you're looking for those uh, wipes that they're out there and they're gone and I've seen a rush here in the New York metropolitan area, well you can make your own uh, simple sandy wipes. It's real easy and if you notice on all these products I've blotted out the names why i'm not here to make a buck off of anybody i'm not running this youtube channel to uh supplement my income i'm doing this youtube channel simply to give you the information i see a lot of things in in the world i see a lot of people panicking a lot, and, and getting information so i'm trying to give you the basic information by blocking the names i feel i'm not um promoting any one particular company however <laughs> i will now bleach you can buy that again in the dollar store. Lasts for about six to eight months. I'm going to use Clorox because they happen to have it on their website. And I will give you all the links where I made statements of fact. So that you could double check them and see where I got them from. Uh, so Clorox says, look, we recommend a 1% to 30% solution uh, of of uh, bleach. And, and it will equal one of those sandy wipes. So what is that? Well... You take one gallon of bleach and you take 30% solution of bleach, which is about a half a cup. You mix it together and you come to that uh, 1 to 30% solution. Okay. Uh, you could buy in, in discount stores the spray bottles. You fill it up with that solution. You just spray it on the surface you want to clean. You use a paper towel. You wipe it down. Toss it right into the uh, bag and you're done. Okay. Uh, yeah. Those sandy wipes are nice in the plastic container, but if they're not available, here's another way to uh, go out there and clean surfaces. If you're looking for hand sanitizers, and again, seen that big rush going on. It's nice, comes in these containers, has a little uh, moisturizer in it. Again, unavailable, what do I do? You can use regular alcohol. I recommend using a 90%, uh, actually it's 91% isoproterenol alcohol. And the reason I say that is this, when you start mixing out the alcohol in that percentage with water, you're going to dilute the percentage of alcohol. Common sense there. 
So if I wanted to make a 60% solution alcohol hand sanitizer, I would have to use two thirds of a cup of the alcohol and one third of a cup of water. Uh, you mix that together, you can put in this little spray bottle. Again, discount store purchase, spray it. I'd also recommend then if you want to get some um, moisturizer. Problem is when your hands are clean quite often they crack and they end up um, being a venue in which disease can enter the open skin. So please make sure you use your moisturizer. I wanted to give you the uh, specifics for the alcohol because somebody was saying on the web that Tito's handmade vodka will kill the virus. It, Tito's is only a 40% solution. Again, you need the 60%. Talk a little bit about medicines. Talk about two weeks of medicine that you should have on hand, particularly prescription medicine. Why two weeks you're not going to be able to get out of your house. Uh, you should have that at home. If you don't, contact your doctor, see if he will give you a pres study prescription, find out uh, pharmacies in your area that will home deliver them if you need them, if you're not able to get that two weeks prescription or more. Uh, Over-the-counter meds, definitely a good idea to have. Anti-diarrhea, cold, um, upset stomach, good idea to have. All year long, not just for this pandemic, but all year long, good to have. Um, vitamins, Again, if we're going to be trapped inside, going to self-quarantine, so to say, or, or staying inside for whatever reason, reason you need vitamins, particularly vitamin D. R vitamin D is produced by the body. When you go outside in the sunlight, uh, if you're not going out in the sunlight, you're going to be vitamin D deficient. Good to have some of that on hand. And with that, I want to bring up food. Uh, not many people have more than three days worth of food in their house. It's a good idea to go out and purchase some extra food. Doesn't have to be elaborate stuff. Could just be pastas and beans and rice and so forth. But have enough for two weeks. One of the things I like are these meals here. They go in the microwave for a minute, nuke them up, and you can literally eat them out of the bag. What's nice about that is if you're not feeling well, who wants to be in front of a stove for 20, 25 minutes making a meal? With this, I would dare to guess you could probably get out of bed, cook it, eat it, and be back to bed within five minutes. So not a bad thing to have on hand for a quick, easy meal. And again, um, disposable utensils. If you're ill, it's much better to just toss out plastic than and a paper plate than it is to go out there and take plates put it in the dishwasher and I know dishwashers do a great job cleaning them and, and somewhat sterilizing them but still uh, who wants it to go through all that it's just easy thrown in a bag and you're done for that day so these are the items that I think are important to have on on hand at all times uh, maybe not so much the masks uh, but definitely this other material add to it as you need to delete as you need to this needs to be again what works for you and your family um, and in a moment, I'll be back with some final thoughts. In finishing up this video, I want to give you my opinion and some facts. The facts is fear is among us with this outbreak of uh, disease. And that's true. And why is there fear? Well, people aren't educated. People are not aware of what's going on. They're watching YouTube videos where people are predicting doom and gloom. You listen to certain media outlets and they're not really giving you the right information or they're hyping it up. Uh, and yes, it's true. We don't know where this disease is going to go. Will it be a outbreak as bad as the regular flu? Will it be worse? We just don't know. However, we will have to wait and find out. But that doesn't mean we need to be, have fear. And as Franklin Delano Roosevelt said in his inaugural speech, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. How do we suppress the fear? Well, some of the information I've given you hopefully will do that. Most importantly, situational awareness. Go out there, do your research, see what's going on, make educated decisions. And again, another quote I'd like to use is from a gentleman who ran a clothing store. An educated consumer is my best customer. And that's how it is. 
you go out there, you make decisions based on what you've learned and the details you have. Please, there's a lot of hysteria out there. People running out buying 700 rolls of toilet paper. People, and I've heard this on the news, someone suggested perhaps goggling with bleach. This, this is stuff we need to quell. Get your information, situational awareness, and go out there and make a decision. In closing, I'd like to say thank you for watching my video. I know it may be a little stiff, a little boring, but it is my first video, and I'm hoping to bring you more and more episodes that are more entertaining and uh, less talking, more practical stuff. Uh, other than that, all I have to say is be prepared, be ready, and be safe. Take care.